For the past two months, the people of Tokelau have been building a brighter future, one reliant on the sun, not diesel. With $7 million in New Zealand aid money, together with Kiwi and Australian expertise, Tokelauans are building a solar power plant on each of their three coral atolls. Whakaofo Atoll has just flicked the switch on its solar plant. The other two were scheduled to be up and running by year's end. Probably by the end of this year, we will be the first country in the world you know, to uh, meet our need from renewable energy. Tonga too is turning to the sun. Last month in Nukualofa, King George Tupo VI unveiled the kingdom's first solar farm. The one megawatt facility is called Ma'ama Mai, meaning let there be light. This is the first one of its size to be opened anywhere in the Pacific. It's taken a bit of tenacity for us to get there, but I think it's uh, a demonstration to others that it can be done. Uh, it's a leadership statement from the government of Tonga and I commend them for it. Nearly 6,000 solar panels will generate 4% of electricity used on the main island of Tonga Tapu. That may not sound like much, but Tonga Power says it'll save the country at least 15 million New Zealand dollars in diesel over the 25-year life of the plant. Last year, diesel burnt up one-tenth of Tonga's gross domestic product. We're consuming around about 13 million to 15 million litres of diesel a year. That's, to put it into perspective, that's one litre every two seconds. For a small company like Tonga Power, for 20,000 customers, it's huge. Uh, and that, that is around about, if you, if you think about sort of $1.50 a, a litre, you're talking about, say, 8 to $9 million New Zealand per year. That's the same amount as it costs to build the New Zealand-funded solar power station. It's hoped these panels will not only generate solar power, but also more investment for this debt-laden country. A major impediment to investment here is the cost of electricity. So uh, it significantly limits the growth opportunities. Over time, we're going to change that. Tongans pay at least double the cost per unit for electricity than most Australians. Many just can't afford it. It's very hard for people to, to pay the power expenses, eh? That's why I come to help the, the solar power. A community group is taking matters into its own hands, installing a single solar panel on scores of homes which aren't on the power grid. This family now has electric light and reliable communications. Tonga Power says solar energy will immediately shave 6% off its customers' bills and much more by 2018, when Tonga hopes to provide half of its power through sun, wind and biomass. This is going to be a huge industry in the future. If we can mark ourselves out as being experts in remote and deployed solar technology, the opportunity is, is literally endless. Solar advocate John Grimes is a regular at Australia's Parliament House. He's keen to see government and business seize the opportunities presented by a global industry already worth $100 billion a year. We should be thinking about the technology to come, investing in it and making sure that we play a disproportionate role globally uh, in that industry. China is the solar industry's manufacturing superpower. Companies such as SunTech have built billion dollar businesses using technology and training provided by Australia. We can make a meaningful contribution to combat climate change. SunTech's chief executive studied at the University of New South Wales under one of the men credited with inventing photovoltaic technology. SunTech is the world's largest manufacturer. Now he employs his former teacher, Dr Stuart Wenham, as SunTech's chief technical officer. Much of the, the solar technology in the world today was invented in Australia by Australians. Uh, we, we have not as a country capitalised on that opportunity. So this does require government focus and attention, but with a small investment we can make a disproportionate impact both on the industry and the lives of the people in the Asia Pacific region. Tok Allowans are already showing the way, embracing solar energy in the hope it will help keep their economy and their low-lying islands above water.